to ask you a question regarding Alabama's offense. Now, when I was at Alabama's last practice, it was interesting because to see the offensive dynamics. You had Nick Sheridan with a headset similar to what we have. You had Coach Kalen DeBoer and you had Jamarcus Shepard. In terms of this offensive fluidity, um, what are you uh, expecting to see <clears throat> in terms of um, an explosive uh, offense that uh, can get the football to their different weapons, whether that be uh, their running backs, whether that be uh, their speedy wide receivers, their bigger wide receivers, um, and, and the quarterback usage. Because um, it was interesting to kind of see that dynamic. It wasn't just Tommy Reese over to the sideline. It seemed like a three-prong approach uh, with this offensive attack. Yeah, it's actually it's pretty it's pretty amazing the way they do that, and, that, and that's why you have that pot passing game coordinator, right? Mm -hmm. um, in, in comparison to maybe what you see traditionally as just your offense coordinator, maybe you have a you have a few guys who who are tuning in as a quarterbacks coach um, for different types of reads that are popping up, which is now even going to be more interesting with the headsets in the mm -hmm. helmet. Mm -hmm. Like that's going to be a huge advantage. Um, especially for this offense. So, but I think what you're going to see with that too, is it would be interesting to see if Sheridan moves up to the box. I, I imagine he will do so. Yeah. He said, yeah, um, he will. He, so right. he'll be on the box. And I guess like, will, and then mm -hmm. that leaves us Jamarcus Shepard probably be in it. And I like Jamarcus Shepard be on the field because he has yes. that energy, right? He's yes. impactful from the jump. Mm -hmm. And then coach Kalen DeBoer, that will be kind of your guys on the field. And then Nick Sheridan up top. I mean, it makes so much more sense for offensive coordinator to be up top, to be able to see the whole field and be able to communicate most importantly with his quarterback or to his passing game coordinator. I just thought that was interesting. And you bring up a really good point about the helmet communication and how far, mm -hmm. um, you know, in, and, and how much that is going to help um, an offense as dynamic as this one. Um, I thought it was interesting to see over spring break, you know, for these players that are playing at the ultra high level, like, for example, Jalen Milrow. He's getting to the field house at 3 a.m. Nobody can beat him. So in wow. terms of like that leadership, that Mamba mentality, you always hear about like Kobe Bryant, get to the gym, mm -hmm. work out at 4 a.m., um, you know, get up at 6, rest your body from, um, you know, 6 to 8, go back to the gym. So nobody can beat him to the fact where like people have stopped trying. Coach Kalen DeBoer has, um, you know, backed that up saying, yeah, that's true. The dude um, is hungry to not only pick up the concepts uh, within his system, but also displaying that leadership. How big is that for this team during, uh, you know, the month of March going into this uh, week of not only spring practice, but just kind of from a leadership standpoint with the whole new regime taking over? Well, I think that's huge. I think, I, I mean, just to have that, that sort of leader in place uh, with Milrow. And I, I mean, that work ethic, that's impressive. Mm. I got to say he's, cause he's been doing that for a minute now. Yeah. Right. And yep. he's, it's the, the, a lot of guys talk about that. And I mean, Saban did, yep. uh, and a lot of the players talk about that, but for DeBoer to highlight him several times, mm -hmm. right. Not just a few, but several times about his work ethic and mm -hmm. his, his grind. It's almost like, you know, it's funny because I was just, I, I, I saw a clip of Michael Jordan the other night talking on, on the last dance. Right. Yep. And then it's from there. I went, I couldn't stop. I, I was like, I'm just going to go watch it. So, <laughs> and rewatch it. I've watched it like two or three times, but I love that, that documentary. But that is that he, it's almost like he has that Michael Jordan mentality. Mm. You're right. He has that Kobe Bryant, Kobe Bryant, had extreme work ethic. And he highlighted that and that was well documented. But I think what's even cooler to see is with Milrow right now, that that mentality like okay i want you all to keep talking negative about yeah. me mm -hmm. and i am going to win yeah. i am going to prove to everybody yep. that you know it's like that left-handed game concept mike you can't michael doesn't have left then he shoots three throws the entire game with his left mm -hmm. right and yep. so um i think milrose in that mindset and to have that sort of leadership with his with his sort of uh i guess he really brings that that personality too, where where get, people are attracted to him, mm -hmm. right? It's just he draws people in just from how positive he is and the type of guy he is, and so that is going to be such a critical piece ending spring ball. Just from the standpoint that these guys are really digging in to, um, well, it, there's going to be a lot of concepts installed throughout this this week, especially if you notice this is a this is a long week. Mm -hmm. Um, because if you break down the next couple of weeks, it's not nearly as long. Mm -hmm. This mm -hmm. is a long week because there's a lot of installations. Mm -hmm. So they're going to get into the installation part. They're going to really, in the, especially for the offensive standpoint. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's awesome to have somebody who goes in every day and is putting in that extra time. And it'll be interesting to see 
how many other guys he kind of draws with him mm -hmm. if he hasn't already. I, I imagine there's quite a few already who are already starting to pull that same routine because there's just you, – you, you can feel it in the energy. You can feel it in the atmosphere. You can feel it with the guys in their interviews and the way they talk. There is this – there is this mentality right now that they are underdogs and they will be underdogs all year. They they know they I, which is crazy to say for mm -hmm. University of Alabama football, yeah. you know. So I love it. I, I I mean I think it's such a big big aspect for leadership. Yeah, I kind of wanted to catapult on the offense today and kind of talk about uh, not only the momentum because in the past videos we've had is all about the momentum that Coach Kalen DeBoer has, but when you also look and kind of zoom into the team, you see that Jalen Miro is you, you know clearly has that mentality of what makes a champion. Right. And it yeah. starts now. It starts a long time ago, but he has that. And that's spilling over clearly to the the players, not only on offense, but as well as the defensive side. You got to have that leader really step up. Um, mm -hmm. How do you think that the running backs will be utilized within this specific offense? Because um, the practices that we went to and anytime I talk about the running backs, people are like, oh, you're sleeping on this guy. No, no, no. Like, I'm not sleeping on anybody in that running back room. Not Richard Young, not Daniel Hill, not, uh, you know, Kevin Riley when it jumps on board. Like, none of these guys at all. Like, the running backs that Alabama has right now, if we played a game this Saturday, you have two of the most dangerous running backs in college football, Jan Miller and Justice Haynes. Um, I think when you think Alabama's offense under Coach Kalen DeBoer, you just think about this offense that's going to throw it, you know, I don't know, 60 times a game or whatever. Yeah. Running backs eat in this offense. How do you feel that Coach Kalen DeBoer is going to um, navigate with this, uh, you know, one-two punch that he has at his disposal? Because I think it could make Alabama's offense even more dangerous. Oh, 100 percent. I think it's interesting, too, because that running back room does have so many weapons, right? It's, mm. You know, it's funny because there was something that came out about like the most kind of dynamic duo mm -hmm. in college football, whether mm -hmm. it's offense or defense. Mm -hmm. And that that running back group actually didn't even get didn't even get mentioned. Mm. Um, and I can't remember where I saw that at, I, but I, I read it within the last few weeks and I was like, wow, yeah. I can't believe they didn't say anything about about these this running back group because mm -hmm. this is, I mean, you could literally replace just about anybody, maybe a slight drop off from a freshman standpoint, just because they're newer and they're still learning. Right. But mm -hmm. not much, but I mean, um, I think what you'll see with these guys is we're, it's, it's, it's like playing, um, it's like playing cards. Who has a hot hand, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Who has a hot hand? How, you know, when you're playing blackjack at a blackjack table yep. and you're seeing guys constantly move and you're like, okay, where's the hot seat, sure. right? And that's how DeBoer is going to kind of play this offense. It's like, we're going to see, okay, who are we playing against number one? What are the weaknesses, mm -hmm. right? W what are they showing? What are their tendencies? How can we exploit one-on-one -on -one matchups? Because that is the key thing in this offense, even from a standpoint at running back. Mm -hmm. And we do that through opening it up, right? Very, very open. And then at the same time, like who gets that ball and is showing – that explosiveness. You kind of saw it with Washington last year and in 2023 and 22, mm -hmm. where they were constantly rotating running backs. Now, Dylan Johnson uh, last year did a, you know, from Mississippi State guy who came transferred into Washington. Yep. He did a really good job and he was able to kind of carry the majority of that yep. load. And they had a true freshman right behind him playing, mm -hmm. uh, which was interesting to see because I, I don't know if he necessarily was as explosive. Mm -hmm. Now he has the luxury of any – he could put in the first three guys yep. and any of them can can basically be in a position to break it. So I think we're going to see it as a standpoint of who has that hot hand going into the games, what what type of defense are we playing against. And then I do think you will see everything set up for each other. And what I mean by that is if it, let's say we really want to focus on running the ball this game. Mm -hmm. We really want to get this development down and – you hear him talk about that in 2023. There was a point in the season with the Huskies where they could not run the ball, it felt like. And that was in the very beginning almost, mm -hmm. right? And they were like, okay, we're, we need to figure out a way to run the ball. We're going to force it mm -hmm. almost mm -hmm. until we until we break into a groove. I don't think they'll need to do that necessarily with, with Alabama football, right? With the, with what we got going on on offense from wide receiver standpoint, running back standpoint. And, and we keep – I know we talk about those two groups the most, but the tight ends – the tight ends are going to be, I think we're going to see some really unique things with the tight ends. And it's cool that Sheridan has that, that sort of exposure to coaching tight ends for as long as he did and has some success at Washington doing it. Cause now he's going to be able to probably utilize them almost better than Grubb did. You so look at the, yeah. Ball. And you look at the tight ends on this Alabama roster. Um, you know, you have Caleb Bodum who has moved from wide receiver 
or for, it was moved from tight end to wide receiver. And by the way, he's looked dynamic. I mean, you've seen everybody talk about it. You've seen everybody write about it. This is yeah. fact, 100%. So you look to the tight ends that are currently on the roster. Danny Lewis is, I think, of a name that's just there that's about to have some sort of uh, breakout year. You have, um, you know, C.J. Dupree. Uh, you have Robbie Oots. You have uh, Josh Cuevas, who came in from Washington. So, uh, And then you have Jay Lindsey coming on board, who I think in the future will be kind of your your Robbie Oots when he moves forward. So um, yeah. there's guys within that room that I think can be super impactful. So if you guys like this video, if you guys like what we're doing here, hit the thumbs up. We appreciate you guys more than you know. He's Jake Merrill. My name's Kyle Henderson, both of Bama Football on YouTube. We appreciate you guys. You can catch more coverage right here on our YouTube channel all this week. Big week of Alabama Crimson Tide football news. The basketball team plays on Friday. Baseball team is rolling. So we got you covered right here at Bama Football on YouTube. All right, that was a cut for our video. <laughs>